Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Hudson Passy from the Slick Committee, and I am being joined by the great, wonderful land platter himself, <laughs> Jerry Smith. He is going to be teaching meets and bounds land platting at an upcoming Slick course, and I am thrilled to have him here because. All my people are, you know, that's how I have to find their land because they're all South Carolinians or <laughs> North Carolinians and they didn't do things in perfect squares. So I'm very excited <laughs> about your course. So tell me a little bit about um, your course, just kind of a brief overview of, of what's going to be happening in, the, in this class. Okay, well, let's start with the title. The emphasis is on meets and bounds land platting. So this is the, for the original 13 colonies, yeah. the states that came off of them, Kentucky, Tennessee, um, there's meets and bounds in Ohio. So, and any place that you're dealing with land that's not in those nice rectangles. Um, yes. Even in some of the public land states, you'll find things subdivided by meets and bounds. You'll find mineral claims underneath those rectangles that are done by meets and bounds but it's mostly for the original 13 colonies and the states that came immediately out of those. Um, a meets and bound land description is one where it starts at the tree and then goes a specified distance to the rocks and then it turns and so on and so forth. And you find the written boundary descriptions in deeds and mortgages and warrants and patents. Um, and very often being able to make a diagram of the land, connect it with its neighbors, and put it over a real world map, whether that's a historical map or a modern map, um, helps you solve your problems. If you've taken any of the land courses that deal with land topics or map topics, um, you've probably gotten an introduction to meets and bounds land platting in those because there's usually a motivational talk and a session where you do it by hand and a session where you do it on the computer. Right. Um, this course is an entire week where you'll be focused on nothing but land platting. Ooh. And we do review and teach you how to do it by hand. So if you don't know how to do it, we're not assuming that you do know how to do it. So that material will all be reviewed. One prerequisite that we do have is that students arrive ready for the class with platting software on their laptop or their computer. Okay. Um, we have found in the past that tablets don't work too well for this. Ah. So we're talking like laptop or your desktop, whatever. And the software we use is Deed Mapper. And you can go to www.directlinesoftware and order it from them and download it. Um, that is the most popular land platting software that genealogists use. And you'll find out why during the course. If you've been exposed to land platting um, in a virtual environment, we have sometimes used another program because it was available for free. Mm -hmm. But we will be using Deed Mapper for this. So that is one prerequisite. Okay. Um, the other prerequisite is that on your computer, you know how to manage files. You can read things off of a uh, off of a thumb drive and you know how to create directories and store and keep your work organized. Um, Pretty much everybody should know how to do that, but I just say that that is a, a prerequisite that you have that working knowledge. The way the course works, if, if you're used to a traditional course where you sit through four days and each day is four lectures, this is not going to be like that. Yes, we have lectures, particularly towards the beginning where we teach um, skills and the history of surveying and topics like that that have an impact on doing the land platting. But the majority of your time, over 50%, probably not 75%, but over 50%, this is a practicum-based course. We have a portfolio of real-world research problems that we have accumulated through the faculty's own genealogical research. Some of them have been um, problems that students have brought us in prior courses. And they were interesting and significant enough that the students were asked and gave permissions for us to carry those forwards in our practicums. Um, the practicums cover a variety of geographies. They use different skills um, that you'll learn during the course to solve them. Some of them have errors in the boundary descriptions, for example. 
Um, and you'll learn how to detect those and what to do about them and be confident about the corrections that you're making. So different geographies, different time periods, um, different ways of expressing direction that were in use during different times. Um, we even have a couple of urban problems in the portfolio because yes, you sometimes do land planning in a city environment. So there's this portfolio of the problems. Don't expect to get all of them done. Don't be an overachiever, but you get to pick <laughs> the problems, the skills, and the geographies that you think um, you will benefit the most from. Huh. You will leave the course with a solution manual for all of them oh, that wow. you can use as a reference book. So we give you a little grid that says which skills you need to solve which problems. So if you need something in the future, you've got the solution there for it as well. Wonderful. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time on it, but we do encourage students to bring their own land platting problems if there's something they're having difficulty with. Mm -hmm. um, we have four faculty members. Three of them will be with you through all of the practicums. So you have experts that you can ask. Um, you can even give us homework at night. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. We'll take a look at your problems and see if we can <laughs> give you a little, little guided um, direction on how to solve them. Um, the one skill that I think people learn in this class that they get the most out of over time is being able to use the computer software and bring in base maps mm. and do their land planning over top of base maps. Mm -hmm. um, I personally use U United States Geological Survey topographic maps a lot. Mm -hmm. but we will teach you how to bring in historical maps, geolocated maps that you might get from David Rumsey's website, mm -hmm. pretty much any arbitrary map even though deed mapper says you can't use certain formats, we'll teach you how to get around some of those. <laughs> um, so finding a map that may have some information on that's useful, like a general location for a family, and then being able to plot over top of that, the family, the neighborhood, is one of the most valuable skills you'll get out of the course. Um, we have four instructors, myself, Rick Sayer is gonna come in and, and lecture on some topics. And then helping out with the nuts and bolts of a lot of the land planning are Kimberly Powell mm -hmm. and Sydney Cruz. So fabulous. that's, that's who fabulous we'll team. Course. Yeah, fabulous team. This, this sounds like an amazing, amazing course. The problem is we all get to the point where we wanna take everything. <laughs> <laughs> And it's hard to make decisions. And that's one of the reasons why we do these videos is to help people really understand what a course is going to be about. And so this, this sounds absolutely wonderful. Something that just, just be prepared. You're not going to sit back and listen to lectures. You're going to be spending most of the time working with the faculty through some complicated land planning problems. And see, that's how we all learn, right? That That's how exactly. you learn. Instead of sitting back, listening, actually doing it. Because if we sit there for a week and we listen, and then it's over and they're like, what, did, what was I supposed to do again? This way you, you walk <laughs> through it with somebody who knows and says, nah, 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 not that way, but maybe this way. And so this sounds like a really, really great class. This is something that I know I need to take. <laughs> so um, any last minute other things that you think they should, this, any potential student may know? I think you've covered just about everything. I think I've covered everything on my little cheat sheets here. So, you know, I don't know of anything more. I'll just mention that there are some tools that you'll need for the hand platting. Okay. Um, and if you sign up for the course, we'll get you instructions on how to get those sure. before the, cor the course starts. You can order them or you can get them from, from me. We do it both ways. Okay. Great. Some people may have them from past courses already. Past courses. And what are those, just in case? What, what are those? Um, one of them is a template called a land plat compass. It's round mm -hmm. and it's much easier to use than a protractor because it uses the nomenclature that meets and bounds uses. So you can look oh. at this template and it's clear where North 15 East is. I got gotcha. you. You don't have to figure out how many degrees that is in a 360 degree world. Which is nice for people that aren't so great with math. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and the other thing is a ruler. Now that may sound simple, um, but because of the maps that we use and the scales that we work with, you need 
two units of measurement on that ruler. One is millimeters. That's mm -hmm. pretty easy to come mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. The other is your inches need to be divided into tenths. Mm, okay. okay. A usual ruler with sixteenths or thirty seconds of an inch is not going to work for this, and we've got some suppliers for those. Fabulous. Some people may have engineering scales at home; those will uh, work fine. They're divided into tenths. That's great. That is wonderful. Well, I am so grateful that you've come and talked to us today about this this course. It sounds absolutely fabulous. It sounds like just just what those of us that know our ancestors, you know, their land was the tree to the pond to the. <laughs> And we've been trying to work that out for years. It's just what we need. And I love the fact that it's so hands-on and not just a lecture. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about this class. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching and hope that uh, you are learning more about the, the courses that are being offered by SLIG and that this is helping you to be able to determine which class that you would like to take. And so with that, I'd like to say goodbye to Jerry and goodbye to you. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.